G'day, welcome to the Tech Math Channel. I'm Josh. In this video, we're having a little introduction to conditional probability. Now, what is this? First off, uh, conditional probability, it's written like this. It means, what's the probability of event A occurring given that event B has occurred? Or we know what event B actually is. How's that sound? Not too bad? Well, let's have a look with an example. So say we had a six-sided dice which has been rolled. What's the probability the result is even given the number rolled is greater than three? So what we're trying to find out is what's the probability of event A occurring given that event B has occurred? So there's a couple of different ways we could solve this. Three different ways. We could use logic. And that's what we're going to have a look at for this particular example. We could also use a formula. I'm going to show you that in just a second. The other way we could do this is by using a Venn diagram. You're going to see this in the next example we will use. A great way of doing it because it shows you exactly shows you exactly what's going on. So we're going to use logic for this particular question to start off with. So we've got a six-sided dice which has been rolled. What potential outcomes could we have? We can have six of them. We can have one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. Now what we're trying to find out is the probability of event A occurring given that event B has occurred. Now, what is event A and what is event B? So if we have a look at this, uh, event A, this is what we're trying to find out. The probability that the result is even. This is event A. So event A, that the result is even. Event B, this is the given, the thing that we already know. Given the number rolled is greater than three. So we know the number rolled is greater than three. So we could use logic to solve this fairly simply. I'll show you how. So because we know the number rolled is greater than three, we know that the values are either going to be a four, a five, or a six. Okay, there's three different outcomes which fulfill this. Of those, how many are even? Well, we could go through and count them. We could have a four or a six. So we have a two in three probability that the result will be even given that the number rolled is greater than three. Nice and simple, you could use logic to solve this and I hope that made sense for you. So it's a two in three probability there. But like I said, let's go through now and use a formula because the formula is really good when the questions get a little bit more gnarly. So the formula looks like this one here. The probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B occurring, you'll see this in a second, over the probability of B. So the probability of A and B occurring. Let's just have a look at our two different sets here. We have for six numbers here, any even numbers. We could have a two, a four, or a six. Uh, for our numbers over three, we could have four, five, or six. So four, five, or six. So for this first part up here, where A and B both occur, what we're looking for is we're looking for common numbers here. So we have two of them, we have four and six. As you can see, they occur in both of them. So this value here is going to be equal to, well, the probability is going to be two out of six. And this is all going to go over, well, what's the probability of B occurring? So what's the probability of getting a number greater than three? Well, all up, we have three of those. So it's a three out of six numbers are greater than three. If we were to simplify this, well, these sixes here are going to cancel out. We can multiply both the top and the bottom by six. It leaves us with a probability of two over three. So this, form so this formula here is a really handy formula to use for solving conditional probability. So what about we go through now and we have a look with another example. So for our second example, in a survey of 120 adults, 40 people drink beer, 30 people drink whiskey, and 20 people drink both beer and whiskey. Ooh. Okay, so a person chosen from this group at random drinks beer. What's the probability they also drink whiskey? So we're going to use now just the formula to solve this. So the formula we're trying to work out is this one here. So the probability of A given B, and this is equal to the probability of A and B occurring, and this goes over the probability of B. So let's go through and substitute in our values that we pull from here right now. So we know the probability of both A and B, okay? So the probability of both A and B occurring, beer and whiskey, okay? Is the 20 people drink both beer 
and whiskey. So we're going to put that as 20 out of a total number of 120 adults are drinking both beer and whiskey. And that's the probability of both occurring. What's the probability of B here? The given, okay? The given. That's the way I think about B being, okay? That last one there. What do we know already? So if we have a look at the second part of our question. If a person chosen from this group at random drinks beer, that's what we know. We're looking at the beer. They drink beer. B here is for beer, okay? So what's the probability of that person drinking beer? Well, there's 40 people who drink beer, and that's once again out of 120 people. So once again, we could multiply both the top and the bottom by 120 and get 20 over 40. And as you can see there, this will easily simplify down to 1 over 2. We have a 50% probability or a 0.5 probability or a 0.5 probability of that occurring. Pretty cool, right? Now, like I said, we can go through now and use a Venn diagram to really see what's going on. So let's do that. So the way we're going to draw this is as follows. I'm going to draw a nice rectangle to represent our entire survey of 120 adults. There's two circles we're going to be drawing. One's going to represent the people who drink beer. One's going to represent people who drink whiskey. And we are going to have an intersection for the people who drink both beer and whiskey. So let's do that. We have a circle here for the people who drink beer. And that's all the people who drink beer. We have all the people here who drink whiskey. And as I said, this intersection here where people drink both beer and whiskey, that's this part right for the beer and whiskey people. Okay, so we can go through and substitute these values in here. So 20 people drink both beer and whiskey. That's these guys, as I said, who occur right in here. Okay, what about the number of people who drink beer? We have 40 people who drink beer. 20 of them drink whiskey also, so um, what we know is if 20 people drink whiskey also, out of those 40 people, 20 of them drink beer only. For whiskey, 30 people drink whiskey. 20 of those people are drinking beer. So 10 people drink whiskey alone. I don't know how that sounds. Um, anyway, so... We could go through and easily work out this probability now. You know, if a person chosen from this group at random drinks beer, well, that's these guys right here. That's these people right here. All of them, they're the beer drinkers. So how many of them all together? We can see that there are 40 of them. Okay. And this goes over. Well, this goes, goes over. Well, this goes over the top of it. The number of people who are both. And that's 20. So 20 out of 40 people there. What's the probability they also drink whiskey? It's 20 out of that total 40 there. That 50%. Same answer, nothing too surprising. And as you can see, it's exactly that same formula being played out right there. And that's where the formula comes from. I hope that made sense to you. But what about we have a look at another example? By the way, if you like this video so far, please hit the like button, subscribe, and tell me what you prefer, beer, whiskey, or maybe you don't drink. Or maybe you think this type of question is totally inappropriate for education. You could tell me that too, all right? So for our final example, of 70 people, 40 people have a dog. They're the awesome ones. 15 have a cat and 5 have both. If a person chosen from this group at random has a dog, what's the probability they also own a cat? Okay, that's the first thing we're going to work out. And then the vice versa. It's the probability they also have a dog. So we're going to use this formula to solve this. Uh, what's the probability of A given B? So we know that the formula here, what about you give this a go? Uh, it's the probability of A and B, and this goes over the probability of B. So what's that equal to? Well, what's the probability of A and B? Let's pull it out of our question here. The people who have both, uh, five have both, I could put the 5 over 70, but we know we're going to be cancelling out. Let's just put it as a 5 here. This is 5 out of uh, the probability of B. What's our B here? So we're going to read our question. If a person chosen from this group at random has a dog. So we're looking at the dog people, all right? The good people. Um, 40 have a dog, so that's 40 of them, okay? So we can now work at that probability by cancelling out here. 5 goes into both the top and the bottom. There's a probability of 1 over 8 that that person also owns a cat. All right, what about this next question here? We're going the probability, I guess, of B 
given A, okay? We're just working out the opposite, the vice versa. So this is going to be equal to the probability of A and B. And this is now going to go over the probability of A. We now know A. So let's see what that is equal to. All right, we're looking for the probability that if they own a cat, what they also, what's the probability that they also own a dog? So we, once again, we know this uh, probability of both A and B. That's up here. Five have both. So that's five. Now we're looking for the probability that, you know, we know they own a cat. What's they also own a dog? So how many have a cat? There's 15. All right. All good. Five out of 15. That reduces down to one third of them. Cool, right? Cool, right? Anyway, so now we can go through and we can draw this as a Venn diagram, all right? For the dog people and the cat people, all right? We have the world of people uh, who have cats and dogs, and there's 70 people. We have the people here who have the dogs. We have the people here who have the cats. And we have the people who have both. All right, so five have both. Five have both. Uh, 15 have a cat, so that means... Five have also a dog, so 10 people here. Altogether, 15 people have a cat. Uh, 40 have a dog, so 35 here. Altogether, 40 people have that dog. Cool. So we could go through and easily answer this question the same way. If a person chosen from this group at random has a dog, that's one of these people, what's the probability there? They also own a cat. So it's going to be five out of 40 people. That's that one eighth right there. Uh, and they own a cat, so now we're going to go 5 out of that 15. That's this one right here. So that's how you do conditional probability. It's pretty easy, right? If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And maybe consider becoming a patron. Hey, maybe you were considering becoming a patron, and then I was a little bit too mean to cats or something like that. And so now, you know, I've really blown that chance. Well, I'm sorry. Anyway, please forgive me. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.